A week has passed since Naru killed the predator. The tribe recognizes her as a hunter, and she has gained her peers' respect. They buried the fallen and continue with their lives. Without them knowing, there is another tribe that has acknowledged Naru, the Yautja. Nightfall comes. A giant spaceship lands in front of Naru's village. A tall predator who carries a long spear walks out from the spaceship. Five other predators accompany him. One of them, an exceptionally large predator, carries a dead bear on his back. The tribe members stand in front of the village. Naru stands in front of the pack, assuming an attacking stance with her spear, ready to fight for her life. She whispers to the elder to bring the tribe to flee when she attacks. She knows really well that they would not stand a chance of fighting five predators. Looking at Naru, the predator captain lays down his spear and moves back. The muscular predator behind him walks toward the elder and drops the bear's body. They are trying to communicate that they come in peace. The bear was meant as a gift for the tribe. However, there is one thing that they want from Naru. Naru tells the elder that everything is okay. She asks the elder to bring the rest to hide inside the tents. Then, she walks toward the predator captain and looks him in the eye. A smaller built predator comes from the back, and walks toward Naru. She seems to be a female predator. She takes out a tube, and there is a fetus inside the tube. The predator has learned the tribe's way of communication by learning their primitive paintings. The predator shows Naru a hologram and shows Naru their intention. Their objective is to put their DNAs into the leading races of the universe. The predator lifts up Naru's dress and rubs her stomach. Naru understands their intention well. They want to put a predator's baby in her belly. Naru knows that giving birth to such a menacing creature will put her in a mortal situation. At the same time, she knows that if she refuses, the village will be demolished alongside the tribe members. Reluctantly, she nods and follows the group of predators. They bring Naru into a medic room and put her into a medic pod. First, the machine scans her abdomen and finds the position of her womb. Then, the machine sprays her stomach with disinfectant. Naru felt confused with all these processes, but the only thing that she could do is to comply. The machine uses its laser cutter to create a small incision above Naru's pubic line. It then implants the embryo inside her womb. Naru felt tired after the procedure and fell asleep. The predators continue to monitor her progress while she is sleeping. As expected, Naru's vital sign is really strong, and the fetus is gestating well in her. A few moments later, Naru is awakened by a strong kick from within. She looks down to see a large bump teeming with life. The baby is large, she looks like someone pregnant for 10 months. The predators help Naru to move from the machine. They bring her to an empty small, empty room. There is absolutely nothing in the room and not even a window. The walls are made of a foam-like material that is relatively soft. This is the room where Naru is going to give birth. It was designed as a safe place where the mother could fully concentrate on giving birth. At the same time, nothing can be used to harm herself and the baby. The predators monitor the room with their heat sensor device. Naru felt a throbbing sensation in her belly, followed by a strong contraction. She has watched some of her female tribe members giving birth in the past. So she knows well what this pain means. Naru lays on the floor and opens her legs. A gush of fluid splashed out from her birth canal. Her water broke. A second later, she felt a strong, squeezing sensation in her womb. The baby is telling the mother that it is time to give birth. Naru pushes down with all her might, but the baby does not seem to be moving toward her birth canal. Instead, it starts to push toward her belly button. The push gets stronger each time. Naru knows how strong a predator is, and it is just a matter of time till the baby bursts out from her belly. Being a hunter, Naru has a strong survival instinct. She thinks hard on how can she take the baby out of her before killing her. She recalls how a female member of her tribe gave birth to a large baby. The shaman of the tribe used a blade to slice open her belly and removed the baby. Naru scrambles around the room to find a sharp object, anything that she could use to operate. She could not find anything sharp in the room. This is precisely why the predators designed the room in such ways. 
A strong thrust from within stopped her on her search. The pain forces her to kneel. She holds her protruding belly with her hands. She is trying to keep the creature from bursting out of her. She realized one thing, she has a set of sharp nails. Naru thought that she could probably rip her belly open with those. Regardless, she has not much options left. She stabs her lower belly with her nails and tries to bury her nails as deep as possible into her skin. It was a futile effort. She is able to cut into her skin but cutting into her stomach muscle may not be possible. She needs to think of another way to access her womb. She switches her focus to her belly button. Evan thaw her pregnancy has stretched it. She still has a deep innie navel. This time, Naru uses her index finger to poke her navel as deep as possible. It causes her belly button to bleed. Next, she uses both of her index fingers and pokes into her belly button. Once both fingers entered her navel deep enough, she pulls them in two directions as hard as she can. Her navel tore and created an opening on her belly. The wound is now wide enough for her to put her fingers in. She pulls her skin one more time and manages to rip open her belly wider. Naru glads that her effort is starting to work. However, she no longer has any strength left to cut into her womb to extract the baby. She realizes that with each push, her wound gets wider. So she decided to try something else. She opens her breastband and wraps it around her upper belly very tightly. It makes her lower belly bulge even further. She massages the sides of her belly. She is trying to guide the baby to push through the open wound that is her torn belly button. At the same time, hoping that her innards won't spill out when the baby bursts out. The baby responds to the mother's call. It thrusts really hard and bursts out from its mother's torn stomach. Naru screams in agony and passes out from the shock. The predators monitoring the progress enter the room to retrieve the baby. They see and admire the fact that Naru is still breathing. They decided to put her on emergency life support. With blurry eyes, Naru sees a baby crying next to her medic pod. She couldn't help to smile. A week after, the predators return to the village. They bring Naru back to the village. She has a new scar on her cheek, which is the predator's sign of admiration and a large vertical scar on her belly. She holds a baby in her arms. The baby looks fully human except that it has some skin marks of a predator on its back. The tribe members joyfully welcomed her and embraced the baby into the tribe. The predators have done their job and decided to leave the planet. For now, 